What's going on, guys? It's New York Prepper here. It is Friday, April 16th, 2021, and I have another breaking news alert to share with you guys on the situation in Ukraine. And so there's some pictures being released now out of eastern Ukraine that is showing a massive evacuation of civilians from eastern Ukraine, okay? And I'll show you guys some pictures in a second here, but there's an, an absolutely massive evacuation of civilians from eastern Ukraine, specifically Donetsk. And if you guys are not familiar with where Donetsk is, Donetsk is the eastern part of Ukraine right next to Russia. And that's where the Russian separatists have been operating for the last seven years. And Donetsk is basically a Russian province at this point. It's not even really part of Ukraine. It's kind of occupied by Russian-backed separatists, okay? So the uh, Donetsk Republic, which it's now like a, like a republic in a sense, the Donetsk is being evacuated. There's people fleeing to Russia, Okay, these, so these must be Russian citizens that are fleeing to Russia. Uh, some of them might be fleeing into Ukraine, depending on what their ethnic background is and so on. Um, but there is a massive evacuation of people, of civilians going on right now. And in the last 24 hours in eastern Ukraine, they're getting the people out because they're expecting a war. Okay. They would not be evacuating all of eastern Ukraine for no reason and putting up sandbags on windows if they're not expecting a war, okay? So this is a very serious escalation um, of uh, serious escalation in the last 24 hours. Joe Biden declared a national emergency and he held a press conference. Um, and he asked Putin to stand down and lower his guns. So we'll see what Putin does here. But as of right now, we have a massive evacuation of civilians from eastern Ukraine. And I'm going to show you guys some pictures here. It's, it's, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Um, I think this is a really bad situation. And I think that we're going to see war in the next week or two in eastern Ukraine. I have a really bad feeling about this, guys. I've been following this part of the world for 10 years now, and I've never ever felt the, this way before. And um, I'm really concerned about something bad going down in the next week or two in eastern Ukraine. So what you're looking at here is a picture from Donetsk where they're evacuating the civilians out of the Donetsk Republic which is, again, basically a Russian, uh, a Russian province. And you see they're sandbagging all these first floor windows, okay? So you have this crew here, and um, they're putting up sandbags on the first floor windows. And the reason why they're doing that is to protect, if there's anybody inside, it, it protects from collateral damage, okay, if there's any kind of uh, gunfire, um, these sandbags will stop bullets, okay, so they're sandbagging the first floor uh, windows of, of all these buildings in eastern Ukraine, all right, and that's a big red flag to me, guys, these, these people would not be sandbagging buildings, they wouldn't be sandbagging buildings in eastern Ukraine and evacuating the entire population if they were not concerned about a war, okay? So uh, here's another picture of some more sandbagging going on. You can see this, uh, I don't know what they're doing here. Maybe it's a, some kind of a, a fighting position. I don't know what that is, but here's some more sandbags here. Um, and then here we have a huge line of cars, okay, heading out of eastern Ukraine, the Donetsk uh, area, and they're going into Russia, I believe. Because here you can see, if you look closely, you can see the border uh, gate here. Okay, this is the border to Russia. And you can see this huge line of trucks and cars as people are being evacuated. Because 
I think Putin is going to be sending his military in uh, next week after he gives his speech. I think he's going to be sending his military into eastern Ukraine to take back uh, the Donetsk area and the Luhansk area and possibly Mariupol all the way down to Crimea. I think he's going to conquer all of eastern Ukraine and re, uh, re-annex it back into Russia. Um, and so I think what's happening here, and this is just my opinion, there's no you know confirmed information, but you know just using common sense, I think what happened here is that Putin basically ordered the governments in eastern Ukraine, the separatist controlled governments to evacuate the populations and sandbag everything because he's going to be sending the military in soon. So he wants to get all the people out. And these are mostly Russian people. So, you know, we know that Putin loves Russian people. So he wants to get them out before he starts sending his tanks and his uh, weapons of war into eastern ukraine okay so here's a huge look at this big line of cars here guys here's another picture Uh, this is another uh, line of cars and trucks that might be the same line actually it's just a different angle but you can see this big line of cars um now another bit of concerning information also that i have is that uh kiev recently the the kiev is the capital of ukraine the city of Kiev posted a map of underground shelters throughout the city that could be used by the Ukrainian population in Kiev in case of a a nuclear war or some type of a bombing. Okay. If Russia starts to bomb Kiev with, uh, you know, explosive munitions and missiles and all kinds of stuff. We don't know what what Russia's going to do, guys. It's very possible that Russia could send some missiles into Kiev just to uh, scare them a little bit and, you know, destroy the city. Um, So Kiev posted a map of underground shelters throughout the whole city. And I'll show you guys a picture of that here. And they released this map to to the people who live there Okay, and so this is accessible to people who live in U- in Ukraine in Kiev, and uh, I think there's an app or a website that they can go to. I don't know what the address is. I would have to find it, but the Ukrainian government posted this in Kiev, and what you can see here is all these little icons, and each one of these icons represents a different type of structure, and so what these structures are, they're not necessarily formal bomb shelters but what they are is they're um informal bomb shelters that's what they are they're basically any kind of solid structure where people can take shelter underground to protect themselves from overpressure from from uh bomb blasts and nuclear blasts from uh heat and fallout okay from thermal radiation and fallout radiation okay so what you see here is you have these different icons. You have, um, for example, here, if you zoom in, you you can see here this uh, green icon is a uh, school. Okay, you can see the little, uh, you know, hat there. That represents a school. That means that this is some kind of a school. And schools typically have underground uh, basements in them. And they, they make for very good bomb shelters because schools are usually very solidly built with a lot of concrete. And they usually have basements, so that's why they put schools in here. And if you guys remember, in some of my prior videos and live streams, I told you guys that when this war kicks off, if it does kick off, if you need to get underground, you have to get into a basement. Or if you don't have a basement in your house, you need to find a basement nearby that you can go into and and take shelter in. Okay, um, you know, schools, banks apartment buildings have big basements in them um parking garages underground parking garages okay you got to think about solid structures that have a good solid basement in them that's where you want to go to protect yourself from bombs and nuclear fallout radiation okay um so that's what the ukrainian government did you know the ukrainian government just made this uh map here so people could see what type of informal shelters are around their area so here you have like 
This looks like an apartment building here because it looks like a little uh, apartment building icon. Here you have an M, which I'm guessing is a subway or metro, underground metro. So you can go underground into the subway tunnel, which will protect you from the bombs. All right. So, guys, this is a serious situation. Okay. We have eastern Ukraine being evacuated. Uh, huge lines forming at the border of Russia. Uh, the civilians are being evacuated, probably by the Russian government. We have the uh, the Donetsk Republic is sandbagging all the windows in in all the buildings. Um, here we have the Ukrainian government releasing this uh, uh, map here of improvised, um, you know, bomb shelters and and informal bomb shelters. This is a serious situation, guys, okay? This is very serious. Um, and so we have to pray. We have to pray that somehow there's a way out of this, but it's not looking good right now. So we, we have a little bit of other uh, information here. Um, coming out of Europe, we now have word that Lithuania and Poland have shut their border down to Belarus, okay? And these are just initial reports I don't know if it's all the border with Belarus, but the reports say that in the area of Grodno, Grodno is a uh, city in northwestern Belarus, and reports are saying now that the area around Grodno has um, seen a, a shutdown of the border. So Poland and Lithuania have shut their border down near Grodno, okay? And Grodno is a strategically important city because Grodno is actually a former Polish city. So, um, you know, that's uh, there's a lot of tension there between Poland and Belarus because Poland wants to have Grodno back and Belarus feels that they should have it. So this is a very tense area for Belarus and it's always been for years. But nonetheless, the latest reports that I have is that Poland and Lithuania have shut their borders down in the area of Grodno, so northwestern Belarus. I don't know if they shut all of the borders down, all the way down to Ukraine, um, but that's the uh, word that I'm getting right now. And we're also getting word that Belarus has been deploying more forces to the Ukrainian border. Okay, the southern border of Belarus, which is, uh, you know, they share a border with Ukraine here. It's quite a big border, actually. Um, it's a huge border. And um, so there's word now that Belarus has uh, been deploying more troops to its border with Ukraine. Um, and I reported on that a week ago. I, I first reported that Belarus was moving tanks to the border of Ukraine and, and they were going to join in with Russia and help Russia out in attacking Ukraine. And I think that's, that's a possibility. They're going to try to surround Ukraine and maybe even cut off Ukraine from Poland where they can't be reinforced by NATO. Okay. And then they're going to envelop Ukraine. They're going to use a classic military tactic known as envelopment or encirclement. They're going to surround Ukraine and they're going to take the whole country. That's a possibility guys. Okay. We don't know what's going to happen, but that's a possibility. And finally, I just have some uh, footage here of uh, Ukraine and Russia are continuing to deploy forces to the front lines. So here we have a, a video of more Ukrainian uh, equipment being deployed to the uh, front line. Okay, here you can see uh, a lot of tanks, guys. Look at all these big tanks here. Um on these uh, trucks, okay, you have several tanks. It looks like you have a uh, armored personnel carrier over here. Um, pretty, pretty uh, big equipment here. You got another armored personnel uh, carrier, a fighting vehicle. These uh, vehicles have 30 millimeter guns on them. Um, here's another APC. All right, so uh, you know, here's some tank. These look like artillery, some kind of short range artillery guns. There. Uh, let's just see this again. Here we have a uh, tank of some kind. Um, I'm not sure the model of that tank, but it looks it looks like it could even be a, a American tank. Actually, it kind of looks like an M1 Abrams tank from the side. Um, but you know, I'm not I'm not a tank expert. Um, I only really know the American tanks and the uh, German tanks, really. So, if any of you guys are tank experts out there, let me know what you think. Do you think this is an American tank? Do you think this is a 
you know, maybe a South Korean tank that the Ukrainians purchased, because this doesn't look like a Soviet tank. I don't know 